What's up, fellas? Welcome to a brand new episode of The Sports Student. Mine is Wendell Epps, aka The Sports Student. In today's podcast, I'll be interviewing Charlotte Hornets silent reporter slash host, Ashley Shamady. In this podcast, Ashley will share her experiences working with the Hornets, how she got started in the sports media industry, and will also provide some great advice on how to succeed in the sports media industry as a whole. So sit back, relax, enjoy the podcast, and without further ado, this is a sports student interview with Ashley Shamady. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of The Sports Student. I'm Wendell Epps, and today I am joined by a very, very wonderful guest. I have Ashley Shabadi with me. Ashley, thank you so much for coming on. How are you doing, and how's your summer been going? Wendell, thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. I love any chance to talk about Hornets basketball and sports in general, so very excited to be here, but I'm doing good. Um, I feel like the summer has just flown by. I don't know where June went. It's already middle of July, um, and before we know it, you know, Hornets basketball will be back, so the finals have been really exciting to watch, and that's been great, but just can't wait to watch the Hornets play again, so <laughs> it's going to be here before we know it, but just been, you know, hanging out with my family. I try to get as much family time in off season as I possibly can, and then um, work in between, of course, so it's been good. That's fantastic to hear. I mean, this past season for the Hornets, they got a lot of media attention. Uh, obviously, getting LaMelo Ball definitely helped bring the buzz to Buzz City. Um, but me having watched a lot of Hornets games, especially this past season, something that intrigued me the most was obviously LaMelo, incredible season, rookie of the year, but just how the entire team played. I felt like there were so many players on the team who just took a big, big leap. Terry Rogier, Miles Bridges, PJ Washington. And I just want to get your thoughts now that the season for the Hornets is over, just like looking back on it, what are some things that really stood out to you the most this past season with the Hornets? You hit the nail on the head. I don't know if it was just the excitement because, you know, of Lamella, of Gordon Hayward and just the media attention that was, but it, a lot of the players that we knew the talent they had, they really did explode this year. I mean, Miles Bridges had an amazing year. Same with PJ, Terry, just a lot of people who took the responsibility into their own hands and they kind of had to. And I feel like we saw a lot of good things and just got people more excited because there's obviously more to come. Um, but I think just the chemistry in general, I mean, I've only worked for the Hornets, but I have a lot of friends who are silent reporters for other teams. And just from hearing things, I just, and maybe I'm biased, but I just think the chemistry with the Hornets is unlike anything I've ever seen. They are just the same on the court if people notice how they play on the court as they are off and I think that is what makes them so great on the court because they truly are friends and they truly like being around each other they like coming to practice you know most of the time I'm sure um but they just they like being around each other and I think that translates so much to what they do on the court and it really just shows and makes them successful so just the biggest thing I noticed this year was the the team growth in general. Of course, there were pieces added to the mix, which really helped. But overall, everybody stepping up. It wasn't just one person and the weight on their shoulders. I mean, for the longest time, Kemba Walker being in Charlotte, it was it was the Kemba show a lot of the time. And the ball was always in his hands. And, you know, he's such a great person and player and, and everyone has so much respect for him. But to have a team where it's spread so much and you just don't know who's going to be caught that night, I think that really bodes well for them. And it makes them hard to defend because teams just don't know, you know, who's going to be the hot hand that night. But um, I think that's the biggest thing that I, I noticed this year was just the overall team growth for the Hornets. Yeah, most definitely. I think a lot of us definitely sense that as well. And the Hornets just were able to get a lot more attention. And also something that I find really interesting, especially about the Hornets, is that just like where these players came from, especially like a lot of these players like Devontae Graham, uh, the Martin Twins, Jalen McDaniels, like these guys start out in the G League and they kind of like work their way up to the plane with the Hornets. So like, how cool has that been? Like just seeing these players who, you know, were once in a position, very hungry to get in the league. And now they're in the league and they're not just in the NBA, but they're also thriving. I mean, who doesn't love a good, like, Devontae Graham feel-good story? I mean, he spent four years at Kansas. He, you know, getting the scholarship was kind of rocky waters for him to even start, and then he balls out of Kansas, gets drafted, and it's it's players that, no, they're not the number one overall pick, but they put themselves on the map because of things like Devontae Graham did. Last year, he battled some injuries this past season, but 
who doesn't love like a feel good story like that? And I think you're exactly right. I mean, we have freaking twins on our team, the Martin twins. Like I honestly, you can't even tell them apart. I mean, one wears a shooting sleeve, one wears a uh, leg sleeve. So that's kind of how you can sort of tell them apart. But to have two brothers on the team like that is, is truly incredible. And, and just the same with them. It's just like, it's a feel good story for the viewers to see that. And I think it really motivates people, um, you know, to, to follow their dreams type of thing. I know that sounds really corny and cheesy, but I, I think it's so, so true. And you just, you root for them. Like people who aren't even Hornets fans, you just root for them because you, I mean, Devonte Graham is so loved by so many people because of his story and because of the type of player and person he is that he gains fans from all over and you know they don't even know the Hornets but they know Devonte Graham so um I think it's just it's that underdog mentality and I think it just adds to the fight that the Hornets have and that's something that's going to keep giving them success and I mean we're shooting for the playoffs and beyond come this year so I think that all just goes well together to to, to bring them some success. <laughs> Most certainly. I think the future is definitely bright for the Hornets for sure. So let's go ahead now. Let's talk about your sports media career. Um, tell me, where did you start and kind of what led you to where you are today now with the Hornets? It's so funny, Wendell, because I mean, I'm sure your professors and teachers have told you like the start of this career or things that you have to maybe the sacrifices you maybe have to make. And a lot of times I'll get questions from kids in high school and college asking, you know, how I got here. And I don't know if maybe sometimes they think I like graduated college and then went straight to the MBA, but it was not the case like that at all. I started in Meridian, Mississippi, which most people might not even know where that is. Um, and I was a weekend sports anchor. So I got to anchor right out of college, which was really great. It's a really small town. I mean, I made no money. I worked all the time. I like didn't get to see my family. I, you know, lived in Mississippi and it was honestly the best first job I could have ever asked for just because I got to do all those things in a small setting like that, in a small community who cherished sports so much. I mean, they would literally shut the town down for like Meridian high school football every Friday night. And it was just, it was, I, I've never, you know, I never really grew up in a small town. So it was just such a cool experience and I would never have traded it for anything. So I got my start there working in local news, which, you know, I tell people who ask me about this career in general, that it was the best thing that ever happened just because I think people need to know what it's like to work in a newsroom and to work in an atmosphere like that because it's unlike any anything I've ever experienced and I think it teaches you so much more than just obviously camera skills editing I mean I would work all day long to produce a two-minute sports cast for like the six o'clock news that night let's say there was thunderstorm, severe weather, sports was the first thing to get cut. So like all that work <laughs> really for nothing because sports would, weather would overtake it. It's just, just working in a newsroom, working with, you know, coworkers that um, in weather and, and, you know, your news producers and, and everything like that, working under a time crunch and, you know, going to a high school football game, shooting a couple highlights, having to rush back for the 10 o'clock show, just things like that. Um, I think really prepared me and helped me along the way. So I spent two years in Meridian and then two years in Jackson, Mississippi, and I got to cover Ole Miss, Mississippi State. Um, so a lot of, I mean, just some of the best times. I covered Mississippi State and Ole Miss when Dak Prescott was at MSU and when Chad Kelly was at Ole Miss and they were both like number one for a little while, which was just the most exciting time. So it was really great, such a good experience being in local news. And, you know, I know that's not everyone's path when they take this sports career, but I, I truly think it was so beneficial in multiple ways. And then I got the job with Fox Sports South as their digital reporter. So I basically was just kind of like the face for their social media. And I would cover all the teams that now it's Bally Sports that they cover. Um, and then a couple months after that, the, the Hornets gig opened up. So then I kind of moved into that role, which has always just been, I mean, this has been a dream of mine since I was 10 years old was being a sideline reporter in the NBA. And I just, I can't, I, I pinch myself all the time. So like sometimes everything's happening so fast, especially when we're in the season and it's just, it's flowing so much and you're just in the groove, but I sometimes really just sit back and I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is my job. <laughs> freaking amazing so that's like a I feel like I just talked for 30 minutes but a shortened version <laughs> <laughs> no that's a great point you make there I mean how you mentioned like 
getting that like variety aspect, you know, working in the newsroom and seeing everything, it just prepares you for the future. And that's just like the beauty of this industry as a whole. Like now I'm still in college right now. I got time. Like I obviously want to get in this industry professionally, but like there's so many different routes that you can take, which is what fascinates oh, me yeah. most. So it's just like, super oh my awesome. gosh, absolutely. I have friends who are, you know, are, are in this business too, and they didn't mm-hmm. do the local news route at all. So obviously I feel a little biased to it just because that's, that was my career path. And I feel like it really taught me a lot of skills, but oh my gosh, there's so many different ways. I just, I feel like the bottom line with anything in this industry is like prepare to, you know, sacrifice um, did I, was, is it my dream job to be in Meridian, Mississippi? It wasn't, but I knew like I had to take these steps to get to where I am today. And I just think if you are willing to put in the work, be dedicated, the hard work and sacrifice, the sky is the limit. For sure. I'm curious to know you were in Mississippi that long. What was the most fun thing to do in Mississippi? Like, what is there to do? <laughs> 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 That's such a good question. Um, so I'll just put this into perspective. So Meridian, which I am not, I literally still talk to so many people from there. They it will always have such a special place in my heart. I've met some of the best people that still follow, you know, my career and everything. And I talk to them um, pretty regularly, but the grocery store is like the Piggly Wiggly. Like they don't have a Kroger. They don't have Publix. They don't have, um, they have a Walmart. And I know it's being built up now. Like when I first got there, I don't think they had Chick-fil-A. They didn't have like Starbucks. They didn't have anything like that. So it was, um, they had Winn-Dixie. Like that was our grocery store and everything. So definitely a very small town. But like I said, um, I think just the people, because in the newsroom I worked in, it's just such a good starter market that the news reporters and the the weather, the weatherman and the news anchors were all just fresh out of college. We were all young. And to have all of us be in this newsroom together and and work the weekend shifts, like I mean, if you kind of look back, we basically the the weekend shows were run by a bunch of kids. I mean, I don't know if you can call us kids. We were graduated from college, but I think that was the best part, just being able to hang out with you know, and make friends with people who are kind of in the same boat, whether it was sports, weather, or news. Um, You know, we'd always go to dinners together during between shows, and we'd always just hang out because everyone kind of came from different parts of the U.S., and no one, you know, really had family in Meridian, Um, so we all just kind of had each other because we had to work Thanksgiving, we had to work Christmas, so we just all really had each other, and I think that was probably the best part. Yeah, nothing beats having chemistry with the people you're working with, uh, for sure. And, yes, Yeah. but I do have to say, when I moved to Jackson, Mississippi, there's a Target, there's like a Kroger, there was everything. I oh, felt okay. like I was living the highlight. I was like, <laughs> oh my God, there's a Target, there's like, there's Kroger. I'm so excited just about having Kroger. I was like, this is game changer. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. It's like, you don't even know these towns exist till you know, a job opportunity comes up. You're like, yeah. oh, okay, I guess I'm going there. But oh, uh, talking sure. about um, broadcast teams, I want to talk about the broadcast team you're with right now mm-hmm. with the Hornets, because you guys, especially this past season, like, oh my goodness, best broadcast team in the <laughs> NBA by far. Like, and I, I'm not saying that because you're on here. I oh, you're so I sweet. Mean that. Um, I just want to know, uh, how is it like working with Eric, Dell, Gerald? How is it like working with those guys? I, man, can I just say like hashtag blessed? I know that sounds so cheesy, but it's just the best crew. I I just feel like we, man, the chemistry, just like what's with the Hornets team, we have it too. I, I couldn't imagine working with a different group. And I just feel so, so fortunate because, you know, Eric has been a play-by-play. He has been in this business for, you know, 20 plus years. He started in local sports as well in the local news industry and worked his way up. He did baseball for a really long time. And I just feel like he's kind of taken me under his wing since I got here. And he's been such a mentor. And I just, I cannot thank him enough because he, I feel like he pushes me, but he, you know, is just so good at his job. And I know this last year he really blew up and it's like, we all knew just how great he is, but I'm, I'm glad he's getting recognition from the world now because there are literally fans all over the world who I get messages a lot during the season, like asking how they can contact Eric Collins. Does Eric have a Twitter? Like, how can we get in touch with him? And I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, Eric, can you, can you just get a Twitter or something so people can, you know, start reaching out to you? But no, he's so wonderful. And then of course, Del Curry. I, 
the curries, just the fact that I work with the curries is like, they're the greatest, sweetest family. They are just, I mean, sometimes I'm like, you're literally Del Curry. And, and, but he just doesn't even act like that. He's, he's so humble. They all are. I mean, they're just the most humble family and he's just such a joy to work with. He brings, I mean, he brings his golf clubs everywhere we go. He's big golfer and he, um, it's just, he just brings so much joy. And he just like, I remember when I first started, I was obviously a nervous wreck and I would host the pregame show with him on the road. And he would calm my nerves so much just because his energy was, I mean, he would just be such a relaxing force. Cause he's just like, actually like, this is our job, like enjoy, don't be so nervous. And, you know, easy for him to say, but still it was, it's, it's been so wonderful working with him. And it, I mean, they're just, they're wonderful people. And then Gerald Henderson throwing him in the mix. Love it. I, we joke, I, I think 90% of the time on the show, I don't know if people notice it or not, but like, especially during commercial breaks and stuff, we are just making each other crack up. And it's just, it's just a great chemistry. I couldn't have asked for, I mean, I've, I've heard horror stories of just, you know, people who don't get along and it's just, it's really hard to work with them. And I could not imagine doing a show a 30 minute show like that with somebody who, you know, you didn't get along with. So I feel really, really fortunate because they are all just wonderful human beings. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. It's just awesome to see, like, you can sense the passion when, when you're watching a horns broadcast, like you yes. can tell you guys just like want to be there. You guys genuinely like each other and you're not just doing it for the camera. Like I, I, I'm I can, so I'm not surprised to hear you, hear you say that you guys like joke around, like, you know, on the camera, outside the camera. Cause like that, that's what it's all about, you know, having fun, working hard. Uh, I'm curious to know during the games, because like, you know, when you're like studio host or like Saturn reporter, um, what, what exactly is it like during the games, like watching it from, from the monitors? Is that, is that what you, you're kind of doing during the games? So COVID was definitely different because um, we weren't allowed on the court at all. Right. So we did watch it from right on the concourse. So we watched it from a monitor, um, which I mean, wasn't ideal. I'm just so excited for things to be back to normal because sure. being on the court and in the mix of everything, just being around them is, it just like heightens everything and it makes you, it makes it more exciting. But for this past year, um, yeah, we would all just, I mean, Eric and Dell, when, when the team was home, we could see them on the floor and watch it from the floor. But when they were on the road, we were still at home and we would watch it on the monitors. Um, so that's just kind of how it worked. But in normal, you know, pre-COVID circumstances, I'm usually on the floor and I still do have a monitor on my thing because usually there's a lot of people, security guards and everything right in front of me. So we usually watch it from the monitor anyway, but um, it's, it's a lot easier when you're down there because I can just sort of like get on the court and, and, and listen into timeouts and huddles and things that I like will never take for granted again after this past year, that's for sure. So that's usually what we do. And then we have you know, I usually have a hit every quarter and then we do a halftime show. So I kind of have to like stay pretty much planted at the set because it goes by so quickly and we just have to be ready for the next hit. So. Yeah, most definitely get back to normal. Just get things back to the way. I'm so excited. It definitely would be great. I have to ask you, um, seeing Eric and all the great things he's done as a play-by-play -play announcer, has it made you want to try play-by-play -play announcing? Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I tell him all the time because it is, it really is a skill. It's, I feel like you either have it or you don't. And I actually got into contact with my high school. I'm from Georgia and I got in contact with my high school because I was like, let me just start on a really small scale. And just to see if like, it's something that I like, something I would want to do. Cause I think it'd be so much fun to try it, but I don't know. I don't know if it's just something that you kind of like you sit up there and it just starts flowing and you start going or like how it exactly works, but I would love to try it out and see if it's something that I could possibly do. So <laughs> maybe sometime, like I said, I would even love to do like rec league YMCA and just like bring in, you know, a, a whole announcing system and just try it out that way just to see if it's something that I can possibly do and then we'll go from there but um Eric is the best in the business so if there's anyone I'm going to learn from it's going to be him very true <laughs> very true so um now I want to know um you've been in the sports media industry now for a couple of years how have you seen the sports media industry evolve since you first entered it and where do you kind of see it taking off in the next couple of years well, I know obviously social media is everything. Um, and it, it's been like that since I started, but it's like progressive. I mean, even more, especially I, I don't personally have TikTok. I 
not like I refuse to get it, but I sort of just refuse to get it because I just don't want another distraction. But just social media in general, it's just a whirlwind. I think that is the biggest thing when it comes to media, just not even in sports, but of course, everyone I follow is in sports. So that's all I really see circulating the net. Um, But I think that probably, I mean, it's not going anywhere. So we're going to just have to evolve with it. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't know if it's just because people obviously want their information quick and fast and that's kind of how, how things are. And it was like that when I first started, but I just feel like it's getting even more so like that. So I think as, you know, years, as we keep going, it's just gonna, there's going to be new platforms, diff- different things to learn. And, um, maybe eventually I'm going to have to get a TikTok. I don't even know, but I just, I can't get one right now, but, um, it's just, there's going to be new things coming all the time because if anything, it's like, this is everyone's everything. So I just feel like you have to adapt for sure to how that is. Yeah, definitely. I'm curious to know which social media platform have you seen actually present the most pros in your career? Which one do you think is actually the best for sports media professionals? So I know a lot of people love Twitter, but I just like, I'm not a good tweeter. I mean, literally, if you look at my Twitter, it's it's just retweets or it's literally only my career. I just can't, I, I don't really put a lot of my personal life on social media to begin with, but I really, I've never done it with Twitter. Instagram, I feel like is my, is my favorite for sure. Um, just because I like, I just like the platform to begin with. So I think I've seen more success with Instagram and I actually got my CMT job kind of through Instagram, which is bizarre. Um, I've never seen that happen, but you know, they, they kind of like found me on there. I guess you could say, I don't know, just from posting some things and I need to be better at it. I'm not good at just like keeping up and posting things, especially in the off season. I feel like I go off the grid so many times and I'm like, shoot, I should probably like, you know, say, Hey, what's up or something like that. But, um, I think, yeah, Instagram's my favorite. So I'm going to say that one, but I know people just go to Twitter for literally all their news. And that's, I mean, I'll check it too. If there's scores or anything, sometimes I'll go to Twitter before the ESPN app or the NBA app or anything like that. I just go there to check it because I know it's like real time. (laughs) Yeah. Twitter can definitely be very crazy. It's just like so unpredictable. You never know what you're going to see. that app. Oh man. It's scary too. Twitter is a Social media, that's another thing too. I just try and like be so careful because I mean, I've seen people's careers blow up from it, but I've seen them also completely um, fail from it. So I try and kind of use that as a piece of advice too, is just, especially with kids in high school. And if this is something they want to do, start being as professional as you can on social media from the very, from the get-go because employers will look back, they will search and they will find what they need to find. So just I just try and tell people to be as professional as possible because that is how you're kind of marketing yourself and you want to shine yourself in the right light. So I want to ask you, is there anything that you wish maybe you knew in college about sports media that you kind of didn't find out until a little bit later? Um, I think the, the biggest just piece of advice is just, like I mentioned before, kind of being willing to do what it takes because, you know, if that job comes around and it's obviously you're like not, super excited about it. It's not your dream job, but you just know that it'll get you there. You just got to be willing to, to make sacrifices to get there, to get to where you want to go and, and say yes to as many things as possible. I mean, for the longest time I interned in college as like a news reporter, which if I could go back, I don't know why I, I, I had a reason in my mind back then, but if I could go back, I would have just tried to shadow someone in the sports department. But in my mind, all I was thinking was, I need on-camera experience. So I'm going to do news because it's, e- it's easier to get these news internships. And then um, hopefully I can get my foot in the door and then trinkle over to sports and go from that way. But after I did this news internship, we covered obviously drownings. I mean, just like, just not fun stuff, obviously. And it kind of made me realize right away. I was like, this is not for me. I'm just, I know sports jobs are hard to come by, but I'm willing to to apply to as many as I can and wait it out till one does, because I just quickly found out that it was, that was not the route I should be taking. So I kind of would, you know, it's just like a balance between sacrificing and, and taking a job that maybe isn't your, your dream job, but also knowing what you want. Because like I said, I, I found out really quickly news wasn't for me. I, I 
did the whole internship, lasted the whole summer. But then after that, I was like, I think I'm just going to apply to sports jobs and go from there. So I think that would be kind of my biggest piece of advice. Okay. No, that's definitely a great piece of advice. I mean, it's all about just finding the right thing to do, saying yes to opportunities, and then mm-hmm. the rest will sort of come. For sure. For sure. And starting right. podcasts like you do. Yeah, that, exactly. Awesome. I mean, three years with this podcast, that's amazing. So keep it up. I think you're you're doing awesome. That's amazing. I, I really appreciate that. It's fun. And then bringing people you like on, like, you know, it's amazing. So I, I love doing it. Yeah, so sure. Ashley, I want to go ahead and end this interview with a rapid fire with you real quick, if you're up for okay. it. Okay. All right, so let's do it. Uh, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Oh my gosh. It has to be rapid, right? Um, <laughs> I would say... Um, to fly. I think awesome. that'd be incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite sports movie? Ooh, uh, Remember the Titans. Good one. Uh, what's one food you can't live without? Um, this is such a weird answer and I'm sorry about this, but apples. I love apples. <laughs> I just, I just like favorite snack ever. Just a good crunchy crisp apple. <laughs> I love that. Nothing, nothing wrong with the nap. <laughs> if you weren't working in the sports media industry, what would you be doing? Oh my gosh, this is such a cool question because sometimes I'm like, I don't know, but I do know because I wanted to do this since I was 10. But before that, I wanted to deliver babies. I would watch like a baby story on TLC all the time. And I just thought it was the coolest, most fascinating thing. My best friend is actually in med school right now to do that. But I think that is what I would be doing, which obviously going to med school, the whole thing would take a lot longer, but I think that's what I would be doing if I wasn't doing this, but I'm so glad I'm doing this. (laughs) Very cool. Very cool. Uh, If you could describe the Charlotte Hornets fan base using just one word, what word would that be? Um, I'm going to use the same word that we described for the team because they are with us on this journey and that is resilient. So they come with us through the ups and downs They I feel like they feel the pain if, you know, someone gets hurt or if it's a, a slump or the highs, the lows, whatever it is, they feel it too. And that's what we use to describe the team all the time. Coach Brego just 100% says resiliency, resiliency. So I'm going to say the fan base they experience it. The true fans, the OG Hornets fans. The OG Hornets fans. I <laughs> love that. If you could describe your reporting style using just one word, what word would it be? Um, I try to, I try to do this. So I'm going to say conversational because I think that might be one of the biggest things that you should try and do is it just makes your interviewee feel comfortable when you're, you know, not so straight laced and I'm going to ask you a question, you're going to answer, then I'm going to ask you the next question. But when you kind of make it flow and, you know, you maybe don't ask your next question you wrote down, but ask a question from what they just answered. You kind of go off of what they're saying versus what you had in your mind, which I used to do this all the time when I first started, I was just so nervous that I'd be like, okay, I have one, two, three questions. This is what I'm going to ask. But when you kind of just listen to what they're saying and and act more like you're having a conversation, I think, I think you find it, it's more successful and you get better answers that way too. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's a great point. And just a couple more for you. Uh, Most memorable Hornets game from this past season. Um, This past season. I loved the, um, it's (laughs) Terry Rozier's dunk over Kevin Durant. Oh yeah. (laughs) Oh my God, <laughs> that was so good. That was just, we'll never forget that. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, favorite quote? Um, oh, this one is hard. I mean, there's one that Doris Burke says that kind of, I can't remember exactly how it goes now, but it's kind of along the lines, like, you know, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life, but more so it's like, um, I used to have it written down on my phone, but I got a new phone. So of course it's not on there right now, but it's just sort of, you know, work for the job that you have, not the job that you want, like kind of be present and give what you're doing right now. You're all versus just waiting for the future waiting. I, I was, I used to do that a lot too, especially when I first started and when I was in Mississippi for a while, I used to just think about the next step. And if I could go back, I would really, it's hard, but I would just try and change my mindset and just be as present as possible because you're just, you're never going to get those moments back and you just got to work for the job you have, not the job that you want. Absolutely. And last one, I'm excited to ask you this one. Um, 
what's one fun fact about Ashley Shamedy that a lot of people do not know about you? Um, I played piano for 10 years. When nice. I was, since I was six, I played piano um, all through high school. So it's a little, I guess it's a hidden talent. I don't know. I don't do, I don't, I feel like not a lot of people know that about me. So I do, I play the piano. <laughs> Very cool. You have a favorite song you'd like to play on the piano? Um, let's see. I love um, the song Memory. Um, that's a, that's a good one. I think I played that one of my last recitals, but I, I usually go and like, it's so, it's so corny, but I get like the Disney books, like under the sea from, you know, Little Mermaid and stuff. I, they're just so much fun to play on the piano. Corella DeVille, so much fun to play on the piano. I don't know why, but it just is. So those are some of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, Ashley. Well, just thank you so much again for coming on the podcast today. I mean, this really means a lot to me. You have done incredible things in the sports media industry. Oh I can't wait. <laughs> see what else you do you're so talented you're such an inspiration to myself to a lot of people so just keep up the great work wow thank you so much oh my gosh i appreciate it thanks for having me on wendell and uh, best of luck reach out if you ever have any questions but thank you so much for having me of course thank you so much again for coming on ashley yeah all right fellas so that was a sports student interview with ashley shamity another big Big shout out to Ashley for coming on the podcast today. She was such a spectacular guest. I am so grateful I had the opportunity to interview her. So talented is Ashley, and I just can't wait to see the incredible things she continues to do in the sports media industry. But that'll do it for today's podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in my next one. All right, y'all. Take care. Sports student signing out. Peace.